This is a 2020 North Star Liberty Camper, and today we're gonna take you on a full detailed walkthrough on this camper, including the invoice and what options we got. So let's get started on the exterior. So from the front, you can see the cab over profile. It is very similar to the Laredo SC, where it kind of starts at a lower height in the front and tapers up to the overall highest roof height. You can see how far it sticks over on our truck, being an extended cab. The front nose is just over seven feet long, so it's quite a long nose that sticks out. But even with a shorter cab truck like this one, it's not terribly far over the front windshield. You can't actually see the camper from inside. A quad cab truck like the Laredo SC that we had, it sits really nice on there. It's pretty much even with the front windshield, and that's about a foot longer truck than this. Now this camper is the same as the Laredo SC in many regards. The exterior width on it is seven foot wide, so it's the same overall width. The height is exact same. It's just shorter. So the Laredo SC is eight and a half foot long, and this camper is only seven foot long for the bed length. So they measure the bed length basically from this corner here to this corner here, and that's seven foot. So the weird deal with the proportions on this camper is that the nose overhang is actually the same as the bed length. So the overall camper length is right about 14 foot from the nose to the tail. So walking around, you'll see one of the things that they changed in the last uh, few years was the windows. So the windows for the bed are huge now. They're actually big enough you can crawl through, which is pretty great, add a lot of light. They're actually a different window as well. They're no longer using the Dometic window. And these windows, I think, function a little bit better as far as the screens and the blockout shades. One thing that's cool with the blockout shades is they actually have a reflective uh, surface on it. So when you open or when you close it from the exterior, it reflects the heat and the sunlight. So it's a pretty nice feature. You don't have to use that uh, thermal reflective stuff. Now, on the exterior, we have some lights. There's actually three different lights, one on each side. If you leave these lights switched on on the outside, there's an interior switch that will turn all of them on or whichever of them that you leave turned on outside. So if you want to just have it turn on the porch light, you can leave the switch on here and then switch it from inside. Now if that switch on the inside is turned off, this switch on the outside will do nothing. So kind of an interesting thing. There's also some really cool exterior lights. Now these are probably some of my favorite lights. If you want to these on. So these are the most functional camp lights. I love indirect lighting and it kind of just illuminates the area around the truck and it's not obnoxious. So if you're parked somewhere and you're set up, you can just flip that on. That switch is just on the inside of the door. They also added a completely useless feature in my opinion, but it's a USB charge, two USB charge ports here on the outside. So I guess if you wanted to charge your phone while outside your camper, you could do that. Now, the other thing we'll find here is the propane storage store. So this is gonna have room for two 20 pound propane tanks. Now these are just standard propane tanks that you can get in exchange at those pretty much any store, which is really convenient. It's nice to have a real standardized size for propane. It also gives you the option of running only one tank and having this nice storage area, which is what we'll probably do, especially during the summertime. 20 pound of propane lasts a long time, especially if you're not using the heater. So then up here is the vent for the fridge. There's also a vent on the roof for it, so it has kind of a convection current thing happening. And then on the side, you also have the camper tie down. So these just hold down the camper. We use the uh, fast gun style turnbuckles and uh, we made our own mounts. So it mounts to the steel bumper and to the steel rock sliders. So it's a lot more low profile. All right, so come around to the back of the camper here. We have 
Some outlet ports. Once again, would never use them, but they came with them. You can get the back door with a window, which I think is uh, pointless and just lets more heat in, and cool into your camper. So we chose not to get that. It has a really nice ladder. So this is a newer style ladder that I'm not sure what year they, they first started adding it, but it's probably been the last two or three years. This ladder is much more sturdy. It looks better. It's just better all around. This uh, little handle folds in and out for getting into the camper. I think it's pointless. I think they should get rid of it, especially since they have this ladder right here. All they'd have to do is slide the ladder a little closer to the door. And this is a great spot to grab to get into the camper. And this thing is just obnoxious and annoying. I actually asked them to build it without this thing because I think it's dumb. But anyways, we have it. Uh, down here is the wash port. It's already dusty from our first trip. So this is, they provide a coiled hose that you basically plug into this little port, kind of plugs in like an air fitting would. And you can adjust your cold water or your hot water and it'll spray. And boy, does this spray. This is the same as getting hosed off. Uh, great for washing off something. For a shower, it's not real enjoyable. It's uh, almost better if you had somebody uh, try to hold it and hose you off, but it is quite an experience. I tried it once, not a big fan. So I that, sprayed him down. <laughs> thanks, babe. <laughs> I may have smelled bad. So that, that's what that port is there. Then we have our uh, poop tank. So this is the uh, cassette toilet and the whole cassette slides out, same as the Laredo SC one did. And it's got a little handle so you can kind of wheel it around. This flips out, pull off the little cap here, and you can drain it in your favorite receptacle. Now, it also has a little button here, so when you drain it, it basically allows it to ventilate, so you're not getting it uh, sucking air in and having poop splash everywhere. It's pretty nice. And then up here is the fill. So this is the fill for the um, the water flush feature that this has. So you can put four gallons of water in this thing. And when you push the little flush button, it comes out of this tank and it has a little pump to do that. And then it has a little compartment underneath here. This little tube on the side actually shows the water level in the tank that for the toilet. So as you can see, or maybe not, right now it is fully empty. When you have water in it, you'll see the little water show up in this little tube. It's kind of a very simple, brilliant, elegant solution. If you are camping in the frigid freezing temperatures, you should probably leave that either empty or with some windshield washer fluid in there to keep it from freezing up. So that's that. It uh, has a button and a lock so you can keep your poop safe and secure from anyone who wants to steal from you. On the <laughs> other side here, we have a couple more things. So we've got the vents for the furnace. So this is just a gas-fired furnace, uh, uh, direct in, uh, ignition, another light here. And this light is the same as the other ones. They're switched on the inside or you can leave the inside switch on and you can flip it here. Here's another light underneath, indirect light. This is a nice little water tank. So this one is a suburban uh, hot water heater. And the nice thing with it is it's not the standard six gallon one. This is a four gallon tank, which is great. There's no reason to heat six gallons of water in a tiny little camper. I think four gallons is too much, but realistically it's the smallest one they sell. So that's what they put in, which is great. A little less space inside and a little bit more efficient. Over here, we have our gravity fill for our water. So this is just a little compartment that flips down. And that's how you fill the water tank. So this water tank, unlike the Laredo water tank, is only 20 gallons, which is kind of a bummer. There's room for a 30 gallon tank, but they don't want to try too hard. This here is the exterior plug-in. So if you want to plug into uh, shore power or if you want to charge your batteries you can do that since we have no battery in here we plugged it in so you can see the great lights on here coming down the side you'll see we've got a window this is a really nice window a kitchen window i really like how they made it 
much bigger than the Laredo one that we had. It was a tiny little porthole. And then we've got a matching window here, which is the same as the other side bedroom window. And that is the full exterior. So let's take a look on the inside of the camper. Go. All right, so as we come in the front door, you can see it has a screen feature. So you can either leave the screen open or closed and either with the door or without the door. The other thing they added to this camper, which was kind of a nice feature, is a strut at the bottom of the door. So basically it, it kind of more or less self opens and then holds itself open and does pretty well even in the winds. We were noticing that it's, it held fairly well, but if it's really blowing, it'll kind of flap a little bit as it, the wind catches it. So coming in here, we have the two switches down here at the bottom of the entry. So the one switch turns on that bottom light that you saw, um, the indirect light. And then this switch here actually switches this light directly above me. So you can either leave that on and push the little button here and turn it on and off, or you can use this. Now, if you're getting into the camper, the reason they put the switch down here is because it's easy to access from the ground level. So underneath the shower area, we have a little fold down cubby. So this serves two functions. One is to access all the plumbing, but it also just gives a really big floor level storage area, which is pretty nice. Now this is the shower room, which the shower has a little pull across shade, which super sucks. They need to get rid of this thing. It is awful. The older Laredo or the older Liberty campers used to have a door, which seems a lot more functional. It would just swing out. Um, this thing is, I think we might get rid of it. Super sucks. The, the other uh, camper we had had a pull across screen, which was great because it just retracted and then it functioned as a water shield. And so you could close it for a room privacy. I guess Faith likes privacy. Anyways, <laughs> inside here we have a skylight. So this is for us taller people. So we don't hit our head as much. Um, so if we are standing, well, if I'm standing here with the shower pan, I almost can stand straight up, but that's with the floor pan in place. This floor pan pops out to reveal the shower pan. So the reason that they put this little, little uh, piece of, uh, I guess, plastic in there is because the toilet is so high. It makes a lot easier to step up on the toilet with this little thing in place. And also, I guess if your shower pan was wet, it would keep you from standing in it. So with the shower pan pulled out, then I can barely, I can basically touch the ceiling just barely, but I'm right about six foot tall. Much more functional though for a miniature shower inside. And this is just a wet bath. So for what it is, pretty cool for such a small camper space. There's a little storage compartment up here that you can put whatever toiletry items you might have. There's a light here. Now all these interior lights function the same. There's just a little push button on them and they're all LED, which is kind of nice. There's a mirror, which is kind of an awkward height, not really functional, not a big fan, but I understand what they're doing with it. What would be nice is if they put their door back and just put the mirror on the door and then you could just open it up and look at yourself if you wanted to, if you're good looking that is. So down here we've got uh, the shower head. So little shower wand, it has a little holder on the back wall here and then there's the hot and cold water uh, adjustments there. And then we have a little uh, drying rack, I assume that's what it is, or towel rack. And then we've got the toilet. This is Faith's favorite feature right here. She loves this thing. So the key with using this cassette toilet is you want to open the little hatch door with this little lever here before you do your business because otherwise it gets all over. And then there's a little button here that you can use that pumps up some fresh water into the bowl and sort of tries to flush it. I think there's better ways to flush it than that. And really, do you want to fill your tank? with your fresh water that you have in there? Probably not. So this little panel pops back in just like that. And there's your little shower room. Pretty neat for such a small camper. This fits in a short bed truck and basically with this truck being an F-250, which is a six foot nine inch bed length, 
the camper is pretty much fully in the truck. It just barely extends the back and it's, it's still inset from the bumper, which is pretty sweet. Now, coming back here, we have um, this Max fan and this is one of the nicer units. This one has uh, the rain shield built in, which all Max fans do. It has a an option here that if you uh, want the uh, temperature to control the fan speed, you turn on this um, auto button and it basically it, it turns on the fan at a variable rate of speed at 78 degrees and it kind of ramps up the speed of the fan slowly progressively as it gets hotter in here and vice versa as it gets colder. You can also use the up and down arrows to manually override and increase the fan speed and it also can blow in or suck out so it's reversible and that's on off it's a pretty cool little fan definitely like that little guy um, here is the Dometic fridge now you can get it with a propane unit which super suck or you can buy with a very small upgrade this compressor version of this fridge now this is a the newest version of it so it's got digital controls it's really a nice unit uh, 3.7 cubic foot fridge. Um, they have a little uh, lever here that sort of locks and unlocks this top lever. And then there's a secondary latch down here at the bottom. So to open it, you actually have to push both. Not a huge fan of the bottom lever, except for when we travel, it keeps the door closed, especially off-road. But it's a little bit of a hassle every time we want to open this thing. So on the inside of this guy, we've got the biggest freezer I've seen in a tiny fridge. It goes all the way across. The um, controls for this fridge are all digital. It's got LED lights in it, and you can control the uh, temperature from here. And really nice little unit. So th these shelves sliding out, they have a little lock feature in the back there. You've got a couple drawers, and then quite a large, tall height for beverages. I guess they assume people drink tall beverages. So that's that unit. Underneath that is a storage compartment, which we have some electronical stuff in there. And then another storage compartment, which is quite large. And then this little area is kind of a nice spot for shoes down here. So it's kind of just a cubby you can see overhangs this. And you got a fire extinguisher. So Coming down to the dinette side, we have these little storage compartments up top so you can store stuff. Now this is an option on these campers too that this can be a fold down bunk. So if you had a miniature child, they could possibly sleep up here. So this face basically folds down like this and you have a bunk area. They have a little net to contain your kid. I don't know if that's safe or not, but it'd be interesting. Down here, we have our sweet window. So this has the, the screen that pulls down and or the sh privacy shade that comes up. So you can use them in conjunction or separate. They go up and down together. Um, this has the reflective uh, material on the backside to help retain some heat and reflect some heat. Um, these work really well. They're very spring loaded, which is great. To open this window, you actually have to flip all of these latches, which there's five of them. And to open them, you have to push the center little button here, and then you can flip the latch. And then when you open the window, it has little uh, struts on either side that essentially as you push it, you hear them click, and then it'll basically hold it at various different levels. And then if you want it to come all the way back in, you push it all the way up and it drops back in. So pretty sweet little window. These are double paned acrylic window that is also gas filled. So way more efficient than most RV windows. A lot more comfortable inside for sure. And a lot quieter. It's amazing the noise reduction that these things have. They're also uh, mostly composite, so they don't really transfer the heat and cold as much and don't have the condensation issues. Down here is the dinette area. So they gave a miniature little table here that is uh, sort of big enough for two people if 
you think small. It swivels all over the place though on this mount, which is kind of cool. So if you want to use it as an extension for your kitchen counter, you could do that. If you wanted it completely out of the way, or you could swing it way over here. It's kind of a neat little swivel table. It's just very small. So this table actually comes out, it's on a little mount here. And so all of these little uh, um, adjusters basically adjust the tension on it. So you can change the table height, you can change its current lock position and whatnot. And this can actually slide up and out. So when this is moved out, this little guy slides out. And it makes a bed for a child that you love more than the bunk child. The bunk child, eh. But this child, this is a good child here, so you want to keep him around. So this is pretty nice uh, little slide out deal. Um, we're not going to use it, so we're changing it. But this is it's kind of a nice little setup for such a small camper. Now, you got to be short to lay here. I think it's under five foot. Do you remember what it is, babe? Can you lay here? I can't fit there. No, Faith's just over five foot, so it does not work if you're very tall. It's for kids or midgets, one or the other. Now, underneath uh, this platform here is access to the water tank and electrical area. So this is where your batteries would go, and there's room for two batteries, no problem, if you want to keep their stock location. Uh, 20 gallon water tank. Kind of a cool feature is they have this um, little hatch panel. So it's like one of those little boat uh, marine style lock hatch panels. So you can just unscrew it and you actually can get inside your tank. So if you wanted to wipe out your tank or you know you got something funky in there, you could actually get into it. That's the first one I've seen that way, which is really a cool feature. I like that. Down here we have the little hatch panel and this goes to the outside of the truck bed so you can store stuff inside your truck and actually get to it which is great uh, depending on what you're doing especially if it's cold out you can have some cold storage super nice especially a small space here's the battery disconnect switch uh, so it's kind of a, not a bad thing there so then this table here slides back into this little mount and it slides slides on down and then this uh, little lever tightens up to lock it in place. So there's these little levers on each of the different swivels to kind of control that. And then we can see if we can actually uh, flip this back down. There it goes. So fairly easy to convert this. Now on the other side, we have the kitchen. And starting with this little clothes hamper or hanging closet. So it's got a little rod. It's got a light that comes on when you open the door. And it's actually pretty nice. You could ho hold uh, several coats in there, no problem. And then you've got a storage drawer. Here's your gas uh, furnace. And the furnace control is over on this wall here. So you can turn on off and set the temperature to it. It's digital, which is great. Some of these things are not digital nowadays, which is insane. I mean, anyways. So moving on, we have the storage up top here. Now all of these latches are the positive engagement latches. So you push the button, the latch pops out, it opens. When you push it down, this little um, metal lever comes down and catches on this catch plate so when you're driving it's not gonna pop open which is sweet these are the best latches out there right now um, and then it has these little struts that hold the door open when you have it pulled up now something new with this camper is they actually put these latches on everything including all the drawers which is great I really think that is brilliant um, here 
is where you got more lights. Now, typically you would have a, a um, vent for your uh, stove, a hood vent. We chose not to have that so that we have no hood vent there. You can see this huge window here. So the same style window as the other one. And then we've got this little access cubby. Now this, this access cubby actually shared into this one, but we're gonna make a little shelving area and put spices or other cooking supplies in there. This is a Dometic stove, which is a two burner. It's got a uh, electric igniter, which is really cool. And then the glass cover flips down and you've got a nice little workspace. So this being such a small kitchen, having these glass covers really turns it from not really functional to pretty usable. So this is the sink with the flip up cover. It's got this little rack, which is kind of cool. It also comes with this little tub with a, a little cutting board, which is kind of cool. Uh, the sink has a pull out thing. I think the pull out's kind of pointless. The other thing that's kind of weird is they put the hole mount is way back here in the corner. They need to move it up here. We're gonna move it because the water basically barely gets into the sink instead of being in the middle of the sink. So when you're washing stuff, water just splashes up all over the place. Not the best design and an easy thing to change if you want to, or they should definitely change it for us. Uh, down here is a storage compartment. So this gets into all of the plumbing stuff. There's the water heater and you kind of have storage all the way around it. Um, there's two more drawers here. So plenty of storage. You've got your water heater um, switch here to turn that on. And then you've got this uh, switch here which turns on the water pump. Down here is the same as the other side. It's just a little storage hatch to get into your truck bed. And then a little cubby which gets you into your water tank and your different water lines, but you can use it for storage too. There's an outlet and a CO2 detector. And there's more outlets around here too. There's one up there. And then if we look on this wall here, there's another outlet. This is a really cool addition. They finally added what they call a charging center. So it's got a 12 volt socket to USB. They've got their little clock, which is totally dumb, but there it is. And then this is the switch for the exterior wall lights that we were looking at earlier. So that's the main living area coming up here on the bed. This is a full size queen bed. It's huge. And then it's even a little bit longer because the nose set up on here, but uh, it's, it's really big for such a small camper. Now up here in the corner here, we have another charging center, the exact same as back there. Over here is a hamper, which they put a strut on, which is great because the old one we had did not have that and it flipped and flopped open. So this is a hamper from this corner up here all the way back here, which is a lot of room for hamper items. Now, normally this area over here is just used for a TV. What we did is ask them to build a secondary closet. So we got this closet here. They still put in their little outlet for a TV, which is pointless. Anyways, this little closet is sweet. So it's just an open box right now. We're gonna build some shelving into it, but you can see it goes way down there. And then on this side, it's the same deal. There's no charge port here, but we do have the same hamper. And then there's the same coat closet right here. And it goes all the way down to the bottom of the bed. There's a privacy curtain, which is kind of silly, but um, there it is. I guess people want to be private. I guess if you have kiddos, maybe one sleeping <laughs> here might be a good thing. So if you're really concerned about privacy, there's smoke detector. Uh, these windows are the same as down there. They're really great. It's amazing how much light comes in here. The other thing that's really nice with how they did this is uh, with the LED lights. They're not uh, fancy lights and they're not even switched. All of them just turn on and off by pushing the little button on them. But they provide a lot of them. So 
you can M3 across the bed there and all over the roof here. So there's no shortage of lights. Now, uh, the, the other thing that typically you'll find in these campers is they have a, uh, what they call an exit vent over the bed. Now, this used to be a requirement to be able to have an exit from the bed area. But now with these windows being so big, they actually can do it without that exit vent. And without that exit vent, it uh, helps with heat retention, but also gives you more room on the roof for some solar, which we'll be doing on this camper. And the uh, exit vent can be upgraded. They have an upgraded vent, which is more like these windows where it kind of will prop open. And if you're gonna do that vent, upgrade it to that thing because it's way nicer. It's just really, really nice. And then the uh, other thing that you have here is in the middle is the roof vent, which we didn't want. You may have seen that earlier video, but this is where your air conditioner would go if you chose to get one. Don't, because <laughs> that's really not uh, a great thing with uh, a camper, putting a bunch of roof, uh, weight on your roof. Uh, if you want it to handle uh, better, especially on the back roads and off-road, keeping that weight as low as possible is going to do a lot for your uh, performance. Now, speaking of that, it is interesting with this camper being a hard-sided camper, they make a soft top pop-up version of this camper. It's very similar, a little different layout just because of the pop-up doesn't allow for everything to be in the same location. But the overall center of gravity of this camper compared to the pop-up is extremely similar. It's only, I believe, two inch difference and you can pull it up on their website to compare. But this camper, if you keep your weight loaded low on it, it'll actually handle pretty good. Now, the other thing that this camper has is a storage area. It's kind of a basement of the camper. So this is where if you had a gray tank that would be located and it's about a seven inch high space underneath the entire camper typically they just put foam insulation on it so it helps keep the floor a little bit warmer but we're going to actually convert it and use it for storage so we're going to make drawers and be able to store stuff one of the things we're going to store is probably those jacks on the exterior put them underneath the camper that way keeps the center of gravity a little lower, a little less wind drag, and less likely to get ripped off when we drive it on some interesting uh, trails in different locations. So we'll see how that goes. So let's take a look at the invoice real quick on this thing. If you're wanting to order one of these things, that's, uh, you can see the options that we got on here was the glass top sink. That was an upgrade option, $355 at this time. There's the Dometic fridge that we showed you. That upgrade cost was only $120. That's insanely cheap. The insulation upgrade, they insulated all of the exterior and the roof with this foil back insulation. And that was $210. And then they install kind of a, a spacer underneath the camper that they call a riser spacer because of our newer truck having a taller cab just to get it up high enough so the cab over part didn't hit the cab of the truck. That was $65. Now, that was all the additions we did. Mostly, we got rid of things. So we got rid of the exit vent over the bed, the stove hood vent, the pop-out pass-through window. So normally there's a window right here into the cab, which, I mean, come on, they're really pointless. You can't ever see through the whole thing because they get dusty and dirty and whatnot. And it is really cold here seeing the dinette with that window there because it lets in a lot of cold and uh, I'm sure heat at different times of the year too. So we got rid of that. That was really nice to get rid of. Uh, the half wrap around the rear of the camper. Typically these campers have a flat rear and they have the tail lights on either side. We did not get that. So it, you can see it's kind of cut out like a smaller truck bed camper would be. And then the pop-out pass-through window, we already covered that. The gray tank underneath, we did not get the gray tank. So we have no, no tank there because we're gonna use it for storage drawers. And then we got rid of the TV shelf 
and we had them add the closet on that side. So that was all the stuff we had added and changed on it. Our total options on this was about 750 bucks and their retail price on it at this time was just over 24,000 and freight on it was 850 bucks to get it to the dealer. So that's, that's kind of how that kind of worked out. So not a bad camper for the money. I think it's a lot of value for the money. They're well constructed. It's all wood framed constructed. Um, it uses half inch plywood on it. And then the framing in the roof and whatnot is all inch and a half inch uh, wood framing with block foam insulation in between it. So it actually is fairly good for insulation, especially for this style camper. There's no slide outs. It's pretty solid unit for a, a camper. So that's, that's the overview of it. We did forget one thing, I'm looking at it right now, is the little power center. So this is where all of the breakers go. So this is for AC breakers, and these are the fuses for your DC powered items. And this also charges your battery when you have it plugged into shore power. So that's the whole camper tour. Thanks for watching, I appreciate it. If you have any questions about this camper, feel free to post a comment. If you have any uh, concerns or anything that you'd like to see us do or change with it, feel free to post up, we will take a look at that. Otherwise, hit the like button to uh, show some appreciation for the video and uh, otherwise we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks so much for watching. So what do you like with this camper now? I really like the new Dometic stove. It's a lot nicer than the old one because it's wider, so I can actually cook with two pans on it. The old one was about a pan and a half, which means that you can't really cook two pans on it. Um, I like the bigger sink. It's a lot nicer. It looks nicer. And I like the brightness of it because they changed the color scheme. So the 2013 um, had the darker wood color to it, which and the smaller windows so overall it was it felt a little bit smaller and the nice thing about the new one is that they went with the lighter wood color the lighter countertops and the bigger windows so it feels a lot more open which is one of the things that i really love about the pop-ups is the pop-ups have a ton of light to them so it's really nice having a hard shell so you get the quieter aspect of it um, we camped with a lot of wind uh, a couple of nights and it was not nearly as noisy as the pop-up campers. So. Yeah, you could barely tell. It was yeah. pretty busy. It was pretty awesome. So I really do like the hard shell. I like the setup of the camper. What's your favorite thing with this camper so far? Um, are you alluding to the bathroom? <laughs> <laughs> so one of the conversations that we had with the new setup is I really wanted a bathroom inside. Um, I don't mind using the great outdoors, it's beautiful, but when it's cold, windy, or when you have a lot of bugs, or in the middle of the night, it's really nice having an indoor bathroom. So that is something that I got spoiled with, with the Winnebago View, and it was one thing that I really wanted to have in this one. Um, the four-wheel pop-up camper did not come with a bathroom option, which, hey, works well. It works just fine most of the time, but... Like I said, if it's outside and it's raining and there are bugs or any of that, it's less appealing. So it is nice to have the option of going inside. <laughs> <laughs> it is a nice option. It's a lot of stuff in one little camper. It is. It, it feels huge for the amount of stuff they fit in here. Yeah, it's crazy that you think that this thing is only seven foot long in the bed length. So it's, it's basically all the camper features in a big camper in a small format mm -hmm. so it, it is a tighter space but for two people i think it's it's very doable if you're aware of your space and surroundings i feel that it it feels a lot more open than the four-wheel pop-up pop hawk camper that we had just because i think the change in the color scheme as well as the bigger windows that are actually usable i think make it feel larger yeah, so this window is actually one of the reasons that I wanted this camper over a lot of the pop-up campers is if you're sitting here at the dinette working, it's, a usable height. it's so nice to be able to look out and enjoy the view. 
and a lot of the campers will put the windows down so low that you have or to down look here. down at the ground yeah. to see out a lot of the like the four-wheel campers the window height is is about here so you actually have to duck down you can't look out which is a total bummer if you're parked somewhere really pretty and so a lot of times in the morning when we're eating or reading a book or just sitting hanging out we either watch the sunset or just Sunrise. enjoy the yeah. uh, outside windows, from the inside what i think is really cool about these windows is they're super they're actually very clear so i wasn't expecting the plastic to have the clarity that the glass does but from what i can tell so far the clarity is pretty similar um, as the Winnebago view that we had, which actually has the glass windows and the glass windows are a lot colder than these ones. So I liked that too. Very cool. Till later. Bye-bye.